Okay, so what I want to try and do in this second video is look at some of the issues involved in working with multiple pages because the first one was only one A4 and although you're going to do a front page, also you're doing interiors and, and that does require a, a few extra things. So just uh, create a new document, um, very much as you've been with a bleed of three mil. Is that changed? So that's, yes. Um, I'll take the margins right down to zero because that's what I convinced you all to do um, and put three columns in. Right, so we have our basic page and um, you need to have um, the page controls for this. It's much easier to see on the PC version than it is here on the Mac. Um, but there's a thing that says pages, you click on it and you get this, this little flyout. Um, the purpose of this flyout is to allow you to create multiple pages that follow the same rules as each other. Now, when I come to do the final version of the pieces, the pieces that you've done about the journalists, um, I will use this quite extensively because even though we're getting two up on, on, a, on a page, I'm just going to need multiple pages. So um, you would do things, you would edit these pages, the master pages, and do things like put in a, a placeholder for a, a page number, and maybe if you're going to have like you know, a whole ecology across the top, you put it in there. And then that would carry through every page because what you do is you drag a master down and then you get a set of pages and you can do that lots and lots of times um, and if you edit these it only applies to these but if you edit those it applies to everything that's created with those masters because you're only doing three pages you won't really need to take this to full advantage but it's it's there um, and if you do future documents it'll be useful for you to know so what um, you will end up with having done that is um, pretty much what you've got here um, and most of you worked on something like this and that did cause you some problems um, as you got to the page where the pages meet um, and frankly I think it also caused some problems with some people who just looked at it and thought I don't understand what I'm looking at well what you're looking at is two A4 pages opened out next to each other and that single line down the middle is where the pages meet and then you've got your columns on each page. Now, what you do with this depends on the layout that you've drawn on paper. I am a very, very big believer that this whole wonderful, wonderful complex piece of software is no damn use to you at all if you don't actually have a plan. It doesn't magically create a design for you. you if you haven't plotted out on paper first, or at the very least very clearly in your head what it is you want on there, then you are stuck. And if you're looking at it and thinking, I don't know what to do with it, go back to your paper and, and, and really plan it on there first. Right, having said that, let's assume you have got it planned, you then need to try and get it on here. First decision you really need to make is what's going to go to the edge of the page, what's going to go to the margins, and what's going to stand away from it a bit. If you're using the big picture, you'll probably want to take it out to the bleed if you put your picture across the whole two columns there. If you're just putting text there, then you don't want the text to touch the edge of the page. It looks untidy, you risk losing it if the paper doesn't align properly in the printer, it's not a good plan. So then you'd maybe want to put the margins back in like that, so you can te your text boxes don't go to the edge. Um, as you've seen here, it's now clearer between the two pages. If you didn't want to do that, if you were going with a whole double page photo, covering the whole two pages but you did have a need because of your text to keep um, a gap in the middle you can just change that middle margin and you do that um, by unchaining these four so that they don't all that together and then just change the inside one and that increases the size of the central gutter between the two pages and forces the columns to recalculate without affecting anything else. Or you could equally do the outside, um, a combination of both and then get margins on those sides without going top and bottom. You can play around it as you need to and chain them together to make them work together again. Similarly columns and, and the gutter between the columns can be changed here. So um, my advice to you if you're doing text is don't let the text go to the edge of the page. If you're doing photos get the photos off off to the bleed. There is one final circumstance under which none of this really helps you and that's if your design 
really needs to go across the middle. Let's say you've got the, the center spread, so you don't need to worry about text disappearing as the pages are stapled together, and you want text to go across both pages, well, you could do it like this. Um, or you could actually go right back to the start, set up an A3 page, and put your columns on, on, on there. So I'm going to close this one, create a new document, and this time instead of A4, I'm going to make it A3. And this time I'm going to make it landscape, because two A4 portrait pages next together, next to each other, make one big A3 landscape page. Put the bleed back in. And I was finding I quite like those 5mm margins, so I'll leave it at 5mm. <coughs> Excuse me. But now I'm going to put an odd number of columns in, and five columns. And you'll see what you now have here is still your, your, your two-page spread, but this time it's being treated as if it was one large piece of paper instead of two smaller pieces of paper. And you can put a middle column across there, and it's just kind of easier to work with as long as you remember that you're actually doing something bigger than you were before. Well, bigger than the individual pages were before. The total effect is the same. So you may find that if you have a design like um, the Pets Corner group that, 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 that runs across the middle, um, you may find it easier to do it this way. So A3, not A4, odd number of columns. Um, either way, um, working with multiple pages looks a little bit more complicated when you first see it because there are more lines on the screen, but actually it's the same once, once, once you, once you set, settle, settle down and sort it out. Uh, one final tip, um, if you are finding all the lines overwhelming, and I know some of you were, because once you started to put pictures in and text box and, and, and so on, you just had lines everywhere. If you press the W key on the keyboard, the W key, all the lines disappear and you get a print preview. That really didn't have much drama because there's nothing on the page, but um, the W key cleans it right up for you and see what you've actually got. So I'm going to end this one here and go on in the next one to um, cover the, one of the very first things that um, I was asked about and that was how to run text around an image.